Okay, we're going to learn about using the Go programming language to handle form submissions, woo, and uh, uploading files, uploading files, like somebody uploads a file through a form. That's starting to get heavy. I was like, whoa, we're not messing around anymore. Submit a form, upload a file, process that file, do something with that file. So that's what we're going to see in this video. Half the battle, half the battle is like just having, having somebody show you how to do it and having the code pathway to follow. And so if you're watching this video online somewhere in the world, you can find the code pathway by going to uh, GitHub, goes to 11, so that's my GitHub whatever user account, goes to 11, go into the Golang web dev repo, and then right now we're working in 27 passing data. So 27 passing data, and here form file and ink type, or we're, we're, where we're going to see how to upload a file, okay? So let's just look at that code. Maybe we'll look at it run first and see see what it's doing. So here we have 05, and then we're going to read a file, and then we get store a file, both of those. So let's look at 05 and watch that run. So I want to control C the server I'm running right now, go up a level, come into 05, and then go into 01, go run main.go, and localhost 8080, choose a file. And so I'm just going to navigate to Documents, Go Workspace Source, GitHub, Goes to 11, Golang Web Dev, uh, 27, 05 Form Data, 01, and here's Example TXT. It's a roomy poem. Be crumbled so wildflowers will come up where you are. You have been stony for too many years. Try something different. Surrender. So we're going to upload that file, open it, submit, be crumbled. So uploaded that file, opened that file, read the contents, got that text out, served it back to the client. Nice. Right? So how did it do that? And isn't that a nice poem? Anybody heard of Rumi before? Rumi's a pretty cool poet. If you're ever like just chilling at home, you're on your couch, got your laptop let's go check out some of that roomy poem those roomy poems go look up his poems they're nice poems how many people like that one how many people wish i'd just talk about code <laughs> cool so let's go see how that code works so in this file here there's that file that we uploaded right just an example there that could have been anywhere i just put it there for 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 convenience we have uh, listen and serve on 8080, default serve mux, handle funk, handle gets rid of any fav icon requests, and then we have with a not found handler, and then we have uh, at this uh, request path, right, we run foo, this is foo, foo creates a variable s, which is a string, when you use var s string, and you do not, we're declaring the variable s is of type string. We are not assigning a value to it. When you do that, when you use var and you declare a variable of a certain type, that variable gets the value assigned to that variable is the zero value. So the zero value for a string is empty string. So s right now has the value of empty string, var s string. And later, if we wanted to, we could assign something more to it, which we do down here on 39. But otherwise, if this conditional doesn't run, which means that the request method has been post, meaning our form has been submitted, so only when our form is submitted does all that hot pink code run. And if that hot pink code runs, that processes the file, gets the content out, assigns it to S on line 39, and then every time, no matter what, this code runs, and this code sets the header of the response writer, right? It sets it to text HTML, and then it writes out to the response writer. It writes out this HTML right there, and it uh, concatenates it with that string S, right? So here's our form, and our form right here is method post, and ink type is equal to multi-part form data. And so anytime you're uploading a file, you have to set ink type to uh, encoding type to multi-part form data, meaning I'm uploading a file. That's the encoding type. All right. 
And then we have an input type, and instead of text, it's you know would be a text field here. The input type is file, and the name is Q. So what happens when we submit this? This comes back, it goes to foo, because no action is specified in the form. It submits to the same route it came from, right? It goes back to foo. The request method is post, and so this conditional runs. What happens in this condition? All right, what happens in this code here? <clears throat> we do request form file, and we ask for the variable with the identifier Q. What request were we using earlier just to get a form value? Which request method were we using earlier? Request dot form value, right? Request dot form value is what we were using before. Amazing how fastly that goes south, doesn't it? Isn't it? Uh, request form value, right? Now we are doing request form file. Form file, it's a file. And when you do request form file, it gives you back a multi-part file, a multi-part file header, and an error. Okay? And so it's a pointer to a file header and an error. So the file is like your file, and it's a multi-part file, which is different than OS file, because there is an OS file godoc.org forward slash os index type file, right? There's an operating system file. This is a multi-part file, so it's different. But it's basically a file and then a header, which is like has the file name and stuff, and then an error. So we assign the file, the header, and the error. We check the error. If there is an error, we say HTTP error, response writer, right back to the error. So HTTP error takes the response writer, the, a string, and the code. Right? That's the HTTP status code. So we do response writer, error.error .error gives us the string, and internal server error. Something happened. We weren't able to process it. That's 500. And then we stop. Return. So it stops this function. Right? But if there is not an error, we're going to defer close that file, F close. And then we're going to, just for a little information, print this to our standard out. And so here's where it printed. Here's the file. And the file just is an address in memory where the file is stored. And then here's the header. And the header is also an address, right? And it has a whole bunch of stuff there. And you can see the file name was right here example.txt is the file name. The name of the variable is q. And then the content type, text plain, and here's the content type in bytes. So it's kind of interesting to look at. So we do iotil read all that file. We read that file because the file read all wants something that, in, that can be read. It takes a reader and a file can be read. So we pass in that file and then we get a byte slice because read all returns a slice of bytes. And then we convert that to a string and assign it to S. Kind of involved, right? So that's a little bit technical. That's okay because you've got the code pathway, right? And you can kind of look at this and you can pick out, all right, and you can start playing with it and you can look at like, okay, this takes type reader, IO util all, takes something that implements type reader, and you can dig into the code and see how all that works. But that's, uh, that's the first step. Kind of nice, right? So here's the second step. And we'll actually do the second step in the next video because I like trying to keep my videos short and longer. We're already at nine minutes. So I'll show you that one in the next one.